because of what Jesus did on the cross, we can all be forgiven by the Father. We're back again with the rest of our story about the little boy Benjamin who was looking and talking and had saw Jesus and he even helped serve him one night and he had a little treasure box and in that treasure box he had placed some straw that reminded him it was all things to help him remember about Jesus and it reminded him his grandfather had told him about how Jesus was born in a stable and he was laid in a manger which would have had straw in it. And then he went and he saw Jesus coming as far as he was coming in and riding on a donkey. And there was a little tuft of donkey fur. He put that in his treasure box to remind him of that Sunday when everybody shouted praises to Jesus. And then he found last uh, page that we had he found a little piece of um, leather and it had blood on it. It was Jesus' blood because Jesus had been beaten for no reason. But Benjamin wanted to remember. I think I showed this. I don't know if I showed that to you or not. While Benjamin continued to walk, he could only make them release Jesus. What could a small boy do? He heard loud cries of another crowd gathered at the end of the street. Hail King Jesus, yelled the soldier as Benjamin pushed his way past the men and women, and there stood Jesus. Benjamin looked into Jesus' eyes as the Roman soldiers threw a shabby rope over his beaten back, and he expected to see hatred, but you know what he saw was love. And remember, the Bible tells us that God is love, and Jesus is God the Son. Well, just then a soldier shoved a crown of thorns onto Jesus' head, and another struck him with a stick. Oh, that made Benjamin so sad. His eyes feared, filled with tears. Why were they doing this? A few days ago, everyone had called Jesus king when he entered Jerusalem, and now it seemed they all hated him. Benjamin squatted down and buried his head in his hands. Please, God, he prayed over and over. Please make them stop. When he finally opened his eyes, the crowd moved along. Jesus was gone. He walked over to where they had scorned his friend and picked up a sharp thorn from that awful crown. He ran home, and his parents paused to hear his story. They sadly shook their heads and returned to their work. Benjamin placed the thorn in, the, in his box along with a leather strip, and then he cried. He was so sad. Benjamin called Eli, have you heard? Jesus is going to be crucified. No, said Benjamin, he's done nothing to deserve that. Eli frowned, my father said that only the worst criminals are put to death on a cross. Benjamin went inside and sat in a dark corner of his house. He did not want to talk, he did not even want to think about this sad news, but in his mind he still could see the evil men hurting Jesus. I must go, he finally said. If this is partly my fault, I can at least be, be there. I can pray for him. Where are you going, asked his mother. To help a friend, he said. She nodded, and he and touched his cheek. As Benjamin climbed the hill, he found a large spike. It was like those used by the Roman soldiers to nail criminals to the cross. He tucked it in his in his robe and he continued on. The three crosses stood at the top. He could not force his eyes to look at his friend. He noticed a small group of people apart from the larger crowd. He knew they were Jesus' dearest friends. He sat near them and bowed to pray, but only the words were came was, I'm sorry, God, I am so sorry. Benjamin watched the soldiers gamble for Jesus' clothes. He tried to shut his ears to hear all their terrible remarks. Finally, he forced himself to look up, and Benjamin looked into Jesus' eyes, and he saw such sorrow and such pain that it cut into his heart. But he also saw love, and like before, Jesus looked right at Benjamin. 
Surely this was his way of saying all would be well. Perhaps he would even do a miracle. But instead the sky turned bark, dark and Jesus cried out, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. The ground shook and Jesus breathed his last. Benjamin was stunned. Jesus was dead. As if in a dream, Benjamin heard the people move about. He saw a soldier pierce his friend's side with a spear. People hurried to take down crosses and bodies before the Sabbath began. Soon they were gone. He was alone. He picked up a stone the soldiers had gambled with. He looked up at the dark sky. Why did God let this happen? Later that night, he opened his treasure box. He placed the nail and the stone inside. He looked at his collection. It seemed so valuable when he believed Jesus was king. But now the strange items, they only filled him with unbearable sadness. It was helping him remember though. Benjamin called Eli the next morning. Come hear the news. Benjamin stuck his head out the window. They posted guards at Jesus' tomb, explained Eli. Some say that Jesus will return to life. Benjamin perked up. His grandfather had said that. He said that Jesus had brought some people back from the dead. Maybe it'll happen again, said Eli. But the soldiers say they're making sure that nobody steals that body. Quickly, Benjamin dressed and raced to the tomb. Could it be? Could Jesus have returned to life? How he hoped so. The huge stone remained in place, and the guards blocked the tomb. With dark, scowling faces, they told him to leave at once. Benjamin walked slowly down the hill, and he noticed a bit of white cloth hanging from a small branch. He plucked it off, and he ripped it between his fingers. It was parent, his parents wove cloth like this for burials. Jesus is dead, he told himself, and he continued walking home. That night he sadly placed the cloth in his box. He would surely be the last thing he would remember. His friend by, he tried to pray, no words come. He wondered, did God even listen? Early the next morning, Benjamin went to the market for his mother. He used to enjoy the crowds in the city, but now they only reminded him of how everyone had turned against Jesus. He shuffled along without looking up. It's a miracle, a miracle. Anybody remember what that is? It's something only God can do. Well, it's a miracle, shrieked a girl. Benjamin stopped in his tracks and listened. Jesus has risen from the dead. The stone's been removed. Benjamin turned and ran to the market and up toward the tomb. Could it be possible? Could Jesus have risen from the grave? In his heart, he believed it could be true. It must be, so he ran even faster. Sure enough, the stone was rolled away. He fell to his knees and thanked God. When he stood up, he picked up a sharp piece of broken rock. It must have crumbled from the huge stone. With a joyful heart, he marched back down to in town. Jesus was alive. In the market, he met a woman who was a friend of Jesus. I know the good news, he said, Jesus is alive. Yes, she smiled, as the prophet said, on the third day he will rise. Some of us have even seen him. Benjamin ran home and told his parents. He placed the rock or the stone in his box. What? He had a treasure now. <clears throat> During the next few days, Benjamin listened to the disciples share how Jesus had appeared to them in various places. Jesus said that all this was going to happen so forgiveness could be preached to all the nation. Who needs forgiven? All of us need forgiven, don't we? Because we all have sinned. All of us have thought things or said things or done things that we shouldn't have done. And that is sin, and sin separates us from God. And we need forgiveness of those. Well, since all these things had happened, as I said, now we can go tell others the good news of forgiveness. Benjamin smiled. Now he understood all that Jesus had forgiven him too for. He waited to share the good news. He, he wanted to share the good news. He ran home. He got his treasure box, and he went out into the streets and gathered all his friends. Inside this box, he said, is a great treasure. The children drew close and listened with excitement. One by one, Benjamin pulled out all those little treasures he had, 
and explained how he got it and what they meant. And so you see, as he closed the box and looked to their faces, the treasure is really Jesus. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, we can all be forgiven by the Father. They all cheered and they begged him to tell the story again. How about you boys and girls? Have you realized that you have sinned and you're not as good as God is good? The Bible tells us that none of us measure up to God. But remember, don't think of Easter of just one time a year. Remember it each day that Jesus rose from the dead to pay the price for your sins and for mine. Till next time. Thank you.